Remember when I told y'all that there's somebody out there for everybody and what one woman is not willing to accept, another woman is there with her hands out waiting for crumbs? That's exactly the situation that reminds me of this whole Nelly and Ashanti relationship, right? He was with that other woman for nearly a decade. And she went on that show and she said, I don't want to be just a baby mama. I want to be a wife. Like, I, I want it to be love, marriage, baby, in, in that order. And I don't, we don't know why they broke up, or at least I don't know why they broke up. And now he's rebounding with Ashanti. And let's just call it what it is. It's a rebound, sis. Like, it's a rebound. I hate to see Ashanti going out bad like this. Because honestly, when I saw that she was pregnant, in my head, I said, yikes. Because already, sis, and why didn't you make him marry you? But this is a middle-aged man who did not marry the woman that he was engaged to for seven years. And he's probably not going to marry Ashanti either. And if we're really keeping it a buck, probably the only reason that he's with Ashanti is because he's nearing, he's, he's already middle-aged and he's nearing the end of his life. And he wants somebody to spend the rest of his life with. And he wants a kid. And Chantel was not going to give him a kid without marriage. A lot of black women are too comfortable being the baby moms. Now Chantel was like, I'm not going to be a baby mom. But Ashanti was like, oh, please, please love me. I'll be your baby mom. Girl. Hello, everybody. It's Hope K. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I've been quiet for a couple of days. I wasn't feeling very well, but I'm back now. I'm not tip top, but it's okay. We keep it pushing. So our fave is in trouble. She's getting dragged around TikTok because of what she said previously. And... Guys, I haven't formed a real opinion on this just yet because I'm thoroughly confused. I was so sure we were telling women that they shouldn't have out-of-wedlock babies, they should prioritise marriage, but suddenly the rules don't apply. Let's watch the stitches and we'll try and get to the bottom of it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into it. So that video is talking about Nelly and Ashanti and how Ashanti is 43 and expecting her first. I'm 42 and I had my first at 40 and I just posted a video yesterday where I stitched another creator's video that was 32 and was talking about her experience with considering freezing her eggs and how she didn't think it was for her and she just needed encouragement from others that maybe went through that journey or even had their kids late and so I always like to share my experience because I was that person that was in my 30s and didn't think I was ever going to have a child and that video it just made me go back to those days and all of the things that you hear, even from people that are your age that are telling you you're not going to want to have a kid older or it's not going to happen or you're not going to want to go out like that. And that is exactly why there's so much pressure on people in their 20s and their early 30s and why they're rushing to have kids when they're not ready because they think it's not going to happen or they're afraid of what if they wait or they have people telling them, like, you're not going to want to be 40 and have a child. I have a comment on my page that I did a video for where in one of my videos where I talk about my experience, someone said, let me know how that works out for you. There's no way I'm going to be 40 and pregnant. And at the time, I was 40 and pregnant. And what I said to that person was, be careful what you say because words have power. And it's very easy when you're in your 20s and your early 30s to think that, like that video that I just stitched said that 40 or, you know, being around that age range is middle age and knocking on death's door when it's not at all and the other thing that i always stress is a saying that elders say which is keep living when you get older you realize the things that was in that video where she talked about ashanti and nelly that she was saying is a keep living perspective that i have that you just don't have when you're younger and I get where you're coming from if you feel like, you know, but she's not married, they're not married. I, I understand that I came from a single parent household, but keep living. I'm trying to tell you, do not listen to people that are younger because they will have you out there rushing to do things that you're not ready for because they're going to put pressure on you because of their timing, because of their perception of age. And you're going to look back and you're going to have comments and videos that I see where people say, if I had have known better, I maybe would have waited. Do things at your own time frame. Do things that make you happy. I've never seen Nelly or Ashanti smile as hard as they are. So they are clearly happy. They clearly know what they're doing. Don't listen to other people. First of all, no, there's not somebody out there for everybody. Okay. Some people just statistically going to die alone. Sorry. Two, I've never heard anybody be this loud and this wrong in my life. There's a whole lot of assumptions going on in this video that Nelly is trash and that Ashanti is a rebound. Like Ashanti's not a rebound, okay? You would qualify to be a rebound. Ashanti, just because she's Ashanti, she can't be a rebound. She's his upgrade. 
There, I said it. And it looks like a happy relationship. It looks like this is where he was meant to be all along. This is what I don't like about black people. We can't just be happy for somebody. You gotta always find some negative. Who cares if she's not married? They are happy. That's all that matters. Are you married, ma'am? The answer is no. So worry about your ring. Yikes, the internet is a mad judgmental place. As a med student who's interested in ob I know how complicated the topic of fertility is, especially fertility in women past 35. First of all, Ashanti has never has not confirmed or denied whether or not she's pregnant. So getting on his internet and calling Ashanti a pick me is insane. But let's say she is pregnant. Ashanti is in her mid to early 40s, right? When you're past the age of 35, your chances of conceiving a baby go down. Your chances of if you conceive a baby and carrying that baby safely to term goes down. So she's in a happy relationship. She feels loved. And she wants to have a baby. What's the issue with that? Is the alternative that if she never gets married, whether Nelly marries her or not, or she gets married to someone else, that she should never have a baby, especially when there's something she's already talked about that she desires? We as a society really need to stop speaking on people's fertility because we actually don't know their story. For all we know, her and um, Nelly could have went through IVF together. They could be planning to get married. He could be planning to propose to her tomorrow. We don't know anything about them, right? So if she is pregnant, I think the proper thing to do is to wish her good luck and not come on this internet talking about how she's a pick me. Ashanti and Nelly apparently, it's not confirmed, announced that they're having a baby. And TikTok, Twitter, Instagram is all in an uproar. And I picked this particular clip because a couple of things here. Women are always talking about how they're modern and they want to live a modern life unlike our grandparents or our parents where they had kids young, really didn't fulfillment. You know, they were basically mothers their whole life. And here is Ashanti, a successful, beautiful black woman who at the age of 30, 43, I'm sure has avoided children on purpose, very deliberately, intentionally to have it in the right circumstance. And one... You're making it sound like she's settling. Women always want grace about their 40s and 50s, but somehow a black man is always on death's doorstep in his 40s or 50s. We're past our prime, we're not worth anything. To say nothing of the fact, if we're being honest, to modern black men, I mean black women, black men aren't worth anything in their 20s or 30s either. So there's never any pleasing you. Like a man of Nelly's caliber of his own success can never be worthy of a black woman because you never, you just never like the way it goes. And I think it needs to be talked about how some black women, we they might on the outside share the same skin complexion as black uh, other black women and black men itself, but you really hate black people and nothing they're ever going to do is going to be satisfying to you. Oh my gosh, shut up is my initial thought. My thought after that is, you don't know these people. My thought immediately after that is life has a way of humbling people. And it's, it, <clears throat> I initially followed this creator because I remember her making content um, basically around decentering men from your lives. Now here's the thing with the decentering men content that I'm noticing. Y'all be so focused on quote unquote decentering men that your entire lives and the basis of your arguments and all of your content are all about ways to or reasons why you don't want to build life with a man. Fine to each his own. Whilst talking about the downfalls of being in a relationship with a man and having a family with a man. Do you realize that when that is the only content you create and the only content consumed, you are once again centering men in your lives? And the thing about the decentering men content is that it's gotten to a point where y'all are no longer creating content about decentering men. You're centering, centering men while being misogynistic and being really nasty to women. As a 20 something year old, what gives you the who are you to decide whether or not a, a grown woman who is very well accomplished, who is very well off financially, should or should not be having a baby right now and is going out sad? Also, let's stop trying to just rush to make content for the sake of it being a hot topic and buzzwords. And let's do our research because words mean things. Ashanti could not be the rebound if you do your research, because Ashanti was originally with Nelly, 
she left him because he was cheating and then he got with his ex-wife and then after that he circled back to Ashanti that is not a rebound that would make the last woman that he was with a rebound so let's start let's do our research let's do our history but the comments surrounding her pregnancy is so nasty and it's crazy coming from young women because like I said life has a way of humbling you life has a way of putting you in situations that you really wouldn't know how you would handle them or what you would do until you yourself are in it and people think they are so above situations but oh my god oh my god the way life pans out it's so crazy to me how people are outraged by the message that she gave she's saying it's better to be married or make it mandatory for a man to marry you in order to give you a child and of course oh marriage is not a guarantee but it's, a, it's a, at least a try like at least you tried not to fail but to just totally bypass standards and just say oh no i'm just gonna be a baby mother and make that the norm is really crazy like do y'all know what it means to be a baby mother to raise kids on your own by yourself do y'all know what that means it's real ghetto even if you have a child with somebody that has means and he's giving you a good amount of child support or y'all have a good co-parenting relationship it's still ghetto as hell a child should be in a home with the mother and the father a husband and a wife when you veer away from that that's when we start having so many problems and that's all she's saying and I agree with her it's like why is that such a bad thing for her to say why is her saying that she wishes Shanti would be a wife before she gives Nelly a child so bad I have to agree with her 100% Ashanti all this time she's waited she deserves to be a wife I approve the message I truly try to understand the obsession or this thought that um, getting married and then having a kid is like some type of cheat code to life. It's not. Let me tell y'all from a woman who did it the right way. Okay, went to college, got proposed to. He asked for my father's hand in marriage. I had a big, beautiful wedding in Mexico. Flew everyone out. Gorgeous, right? Had a child. When my daughter was three months old, we were filing for divorce. Being married and then having a kid is no cheat code to life that does not matter i'm not saying go get pregnant by bob on the street corner but if you are nearing an age or not even about nearing an age if motherhood is something that you want and you found somebody that you would like to procreate with or whatever that may be do what makes you happy being married does not it's not a cheat code okay i'm not saying i'm sure there's some statistics out there that say people end up being whatever but i'm just letting y'all know divorce still happens I think we're losing the plot because we are comparing celebrities to us and we should not do that. Telling Ashanti, who A, is 43, which is a whole separate conversation, and B, rich, that she needs to get married before she has a baby is a little out of touch. It just does not make sense to me. Why are we upset that she is not married to Nelly before having a baby with her money and at her age? I don't understand. Like, they do not follow the same set of rules and social standards that we follow because they have copious amounts of money to not have to follow those things. Money gives you access to break and bend rules. That's why you see corporations, you know, do all these tax breaks and you see, you know, rich people not care about a parking ticket, so they'll park there anyway because what is sixty dollars to a millionaire ashanti goes on vacation so much i don't even know what she's taking a vacation from any like is she taking vacations from her vacations like that woman is always in a bathing suit on an island somewhere she clearly has money she clearly has lived her life she's done the the pop star thing and she's a you know a black superstar we love ashanti so i'm very confused by this reaction we are giving her i don't understand why we're not saying anything but congratulations and please stop comparing what you would tell your husband homegirl to a rich celebrity like it is not the same advice she does not have to marry that man first and if marriage is what she wants there's nowhere anybody saying that she won't marry Nelly we don't know that we don't know the conversations we had they have we don't know them <laughs> like we're not in their relationship so if they're doing things out of order which like that's a whole different conversation there is no way to guarantee to not be a single mom you could do everything right and you can marry the most perfect man the most perfect father and he can walk outside and get hit by a bus
now you're raising babies by yourself there is no surefire way i do agree with getting married first though but these are none of this matters because none of this applies to ashanti why are we applying this to ashanti that is where my confusion is coming in when i was 27 when i was 24 when i was a young girly pop i thought that i would be married by this age and my king will come and we won't have to break up everything will move swiftly in 24 months First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes key with a baby carriage. And guess what? None of that has happened, right? It may happen. It may not happen. Who am I to judge other women for going after what they want? Don't we promote feminists? Don't we promote independence? What is this? Whose man's is this? We don't know Ashanti's fertility history. We don't know if she actually wants to be married. We don't know if they are married. We have to be careful of the words we speak on things we don't know. It's all a lie. Calling her a rebound is nasty words. Speaking on a pregnant woman is nasty words. It's violent. It's nasty. It's gross. Atrocious. Diabolical. We gotta do our research before we get to talking. Because one thing about it, two things for sure. Um, there is somebody out there for everybody, but I don't think that it's a rebound. And I don't think that she just out here accepting everything that Chantel or wasn't accepting. The reality of the situation is that she was floyd's bitch first and when even though nelly took her and kicked it with her and stuck with her i felt like that in the deep down in the bottom of his heart he always knew like i stole you from another i'm not about to do none of that for you so them having kids together getting married or none of that i feel like that that was always out of the question i feel like that ashanti is his one that got away also let's not pretend like that men can't be two different things to two different women he could be horrible to you and be the best thing smoking for somebody else and it don't have nothing to do with what they willing to accept it has everything to do with people just show up as different people for different people let let nelly and ashanti have a moment leave it leave it alone leave it alone you know what I rarely see? Other married people giving this kind of advice to other people in relationships. Now, I don't like speaking in absolutes, so I'm not gonna say it never happens, but generally, when I see these think pieces, it's from people who are single or dating. So it often comes off as a projection. As a married woman, I don't care what these people are doing in their relationships. Nelly and Ashanti have been smiling ear to ear since they've gotten back together. Sometimes it takes people needing to separate in order to grow to come better together. And I need people to stop taking advice like this because nothing is an absolute just because it was your experience or someone else's experience around you. The call Ashanti a rebound is mad wild. To be concerned about what she does with her body is insane, especially considering that you are a young woman and she is in her 40s. They may not want marriage. They may already be married. Because a lot of y'all like to drag people and have all these comments without knowing what's happening in these people's personal lives. Like people talking about Adele. Whole time, she was married to that man. I don't follow this creator, but I've seen her on my FYP and some of her points are valid, but this was an insane take. In my opinion, for once, can y'all allow one black woman who is in the public to just enjoy her pregnancy and enjoy her happiness. I think we could all do better if we just mind our business sometimes. Bye. So here's my thing. I get it that it's different for celebrities because the main issue when you're having kids is usually money um, and the household itself, but not everybody wants marriage. So maybe this is okay that they're not married. Marriage doesn't guarantee you success or no chance at divorce. But at the same time, I feel like it's kind of a weird message to tell people that they can essentially be reckless if they have money. Because at the end of the day, this baby still needs a good, healthy, happy environment. And I'm not claiming that they don't have that. Probably do, because they look genuinely happy. But I'm just worried about us focusing so much on the whole money aspect. Statistically, we all know that children in both parent households do a lot better, you know, emotionally, physically and stuff. Like their well-being is better off when they have both parents. But that's not to say everybody in a two-parent household had a great, amazing childhood. No, because they could have been really toxic parents. So the parents being good also matters. And recently, we've also seen the rise of co-parenting and stuff. And some people are very good at it. Some are not so good at it. But even the ones that are good, statistics say that the children that come out of those households do so much better than parents who do not co-parent or single parent households. But it also does say 
that this is not a replacement for the quote unquote nuclear family. Just because you're happily co-parenting and it's healthy for everybody, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best case scenario. Now, these things are very situational. They're very different. And that's why it's very controversial to talk about these subjects and stuff, because one mold that fits your family is not necessarily going to fit the next family. So I support the whole leave Ashanti and Nelly alone thing. Absolutely. Let them do what they know how to do and that's their life. Let them live it. But that being said, unfortunately, we live in a world where the celebrities are celebrated and are put on a pedestal and they do share in how society at large is working. They influence it in some ways. So I guess the real fear is that people like Amani see the the potential downfall of people entering relationships and having children without being married and just being okay with it because they have their finances covered. Honestly, I have no qualms with Nelly and Ashanti because they seem happy, but they're role models. So it might be a dangerous flex, like the pressure we put on Rihanna and Chris Brown. Like we really forced Rihanna to never get back with Chris Brown because yeah, I don't know how that was going to go down, but I'm pretty sure there was going to be an uproar if she got back with him. We had a similar thing when Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce and we wanted Beyonce to end her marriage so badly, so desperately, it seems. And she stayed and she got dragged for that, that she wasn't being a good role model to other women because when your husband cheats, you should leave. But life isn't that, that linear. It's not at all. And these things are situational. Like maybe it's a good thing and we should celebrate the fact that Beyonce wanted to work on her marriage And maybe that's the takeaway from it. But at the same time, it was dangerous for young women to believe that people can treat you like trash and embarrass you and you still choose to stay. So it's a difficult one. It really is each to their own type of a situation. I I am so conflicted. I genuinely do not know how I feel about this. Is it different? Is it not that different? Do they hold too much power to be moving mad? Does it even matter that they're moving mad? Is it just maybe our personal responsibility to make sure that our young people are not looking up to these people? That's a whole different conversation that is worth having. At the end of the day, we are all human and we shouldn't just copy things. I also do believe that we shouldn't talk about other people's fertility stuff shouldn't assume that they want kids. We shouldn't assume that they can have kids. We shouldn't assume that they're trying and they're failing. We shouldn't assume anything. And we also shouldn't ask about it because it is a touchy subject. And if they don't come to you about it, then don't ask. I know people in my personal life who've been married for years and every two days, somebody's like, hey, when are you going to give us grandchildren? Hey, when are you going to have kids? Hey, what about... But you don't know their financial situation. You don't know their mental well-being. You don't know if they're sick um, physically. You don't know if they even want children at all. Like, just leave people alone. And I don't think there's anything wrong with you having a child at 40. I do understand that the main concern is how active parents are the older they get or lack of activity the older they get. But if they're good parents or somebody like these celebrities, they can pay for things. Again, if that child is not being hurt or harmed, then is it our business? Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think because my head is just moving mad. I don't know. I don't know if what she's done is the right thing to do, but I also don't think some of these assumptions and assessments of these people are fair. Anyway, let's get the discussion popping. Until next time, cheerio. Chica, I'm